Uh, right now we're doing a community action project with our vice unit. We have three plainclothes officers. Um, they are dressed as prostitutes, they are females. What we're working off of is our cell phones this time, so they'll be on direct connect on the cell phones. We do an open line, so one of the girls in the van will be clearing them that they got a deal and all that, so. You girls are still gonna work at the same spot of the driveway though, right? Yeah, we're still gonna stand in the same place. We're still gonna direct them to the same place. Okay, okay good, that works. So are the hit cards ready? Yes, we are. All right, I'm gonna go out. Yeah, they have an open line cell phone from the girl to the people in the van, and the van's relaying info to our to the sergeant who's telling us when they have a deal or not. Hi, I love your car. That was fast. Car pull in like that. She's still working it with him. Well, what's this in the office? Like right now, it's almost impossible for me to make like the type of money that he's trying to make me make. Like, like I'm supposed to make a thousand a day, and right now, here in the summertime, like if you're not working on the internet, that's like impossible. He's paying like a hundred per head and like a hundred and fifty per day. Well, when would you have to work? She might have a deal. Right? So what, is, what is the running of the hand? <clears throat> that means that's the signal that she might have a deal. This time it's pulling their hair, they're both their hands to their hair, but she's only doing it once. So that might mean she's almost there. Well, hey, is there going to be some sort of fee or something if I decide? Yeah, she's trying to get a pencil with him. He's kind of half-biting, um, but he's giving her his number. I'm thinking, if, I don't know, do you think he'll come back or should we have somebody run to do a traffic stop on him so we can at least step by him? I think we can. Hey, you tell me, you won't mention anything about how much you know, sex costs, but definitely stop him. No doubt, stop him. You want to take it off in the parking lot? Yep, take him off. There he is right there. Come here! Put your hands on the car now. Your I was talking you know, about. Specific. Yeah, let's be specific. I don't need to. It's between you and the judge. Are you serious? Yeah. What car is this? This is my car. I didn't need. I didn't offer. I didn't get sex from this girl. Yeah, listen, right here, discussion you. What you did? Okay. Are you serious? Yep. You can talk to the detective. About that. I, I'm gonna have to talk to somebody because I, I never got. I never. I didn't even. Been arrested before in Texas? No. She said that I solicited her for sex. Been arrested in Arizona? No. Hold your head still. Anything else on you? Nah, but how can okay. you arrest me? Go back with, to that car. How can you arrest me with no proof of it? I'm not understanding. I had my first prostitute when I was 16 years old. She was my girlfriend. Uh, she ended up being the mother of my oldest child. And then how did, what did, how did it progress from there? Like, where did it go? Well, um, an older pimp whose prostitute was helping me teach her the game, he ended up taking her from me. I was upset. I was like, you know, he took my girlfriend. And they was like, she was just a hoe to you yesterday. You know, either get out the game or go get another hoe. So. I went and got another hoe. How did you get her? I just went and told another girl, hey, look, I know a way we can make some money, and you want to try it? And she tried it. Hmm. So, so is that easy? Was it easy to get her to do it? Not the second one. The first one, because she thought she loved me, it was. It took the second one a little convincing. But uh, she eventually tried it. So how does that breaking down process work? Well, you have to find out what it is that they want, you know, what is going to tickle their fancy. And over a period of time, you know, she breaks down. And a pimp 
is really like having a cult leader and a domestic violence partner mixed together. And, you know, so there's this brainwashing, this systematic kind of brainwashing that happens. And breaking that pimp control is a very, very difficult thing. One of the first things I learned was that uh, anybody can control a woman's body, but it takes a pimp to control her mind. And how, how do you go about controlling their minds? She has to believe in you. You have to make her believe in herself. You feed them. You take care of their clothes. If they go to jail, you're there with the bail. When they go to court, you're there with the lawyer. You have to treat them better than the other parents. You send them to work looking better than the other hoes. You know, because it's a competition when they're out there. Um, they want to get the big money tricks, just like the other hoes do, because they want to make daddy happy, you know. The more money you bring home, the happier daddy is. And the happier daddy is, the happier you're going to be. People need to understand that girls, when their heart is sold out to something that they believe in, that they'll stick with that belief, no matter how hard that belief is pushing them down. No matter how many times they get beat down, choked, kicked, stomped, in the hospital, dragged, cut, it doesn't matter. Because if you love that person, you'll go back. There's that whole cycle of, you know, grooming, you know, oh, I'm gonna be nice at first, we'll have the honeymoon period, then I'm gonna start, you know, putting hands on my girls, and then when they, you know, threaten to run, maybe I'm gonna be nice again, I'm gonna woo them back. It's like that whole cyclical, like, domestic violence thing. There's a stat in the industry right now. Five to seven times women go back to their pimps. That's the stat. They leave, go back, leave, go back, leave, go back. Because they're in love. They're in love. It's their, it's their husband, it's their boyfriend, it's their love of their life. So it's like a dad love or like a It's a love dad love? man love, older, man. older man love. You already want a dad. That's what gets a lot of them. Girls don't have dads, oh my goodness. If you come into one, like your mom raised you or your auntie or you're in foster care or your dad left your mama, or your dad beats your mom, or anything, that man becomes like your savior. It's the mindset that they've been bred, that has been bred into them. Like I said, my wife was sexually exploited by her family, by her mom, at six. Um, by everybody she came in contact with, all the people of authority that came into her life after that, sexually abused her, both men and women. So. She believed that that was her worth, you know. 99% um, of the girls, well, they're sexually active anyway. I would say about 75% of them have been sexually abused by a family member, friend, or close relative. They have already begun to develop the mindset that my worth is my body, you know. So we manipulate that. We manipulate that mindset and get them to believe that, your, yes, your body is your worth, but it's not just for people to abuse for their own pleasure. If good men are going to be using your body and getting pleasure, you should uh, get something out of it. Does he have sex with you? Yes. For free, right? He mm -hmm. just I'm going to teach you what to do. And I may even go ahead and start a family with you, deliberately impregnate you, have a child with you. Now, what better leverage can I have against you than your child? my child too, but I don't care about that child. That child is just a lever to move you wherever I want you, whenever I want you, however I want you. And drugs is another form of brainwashing. It's just weakening the mind, weakening the spirit, weakening your own fight so that I can control you. It's just another way to do that. But a lot of, a lot of pimps have just straight up mind control um, and physical force that keep young women with them. Picture somebody holding you down and knocking out your front teeth with a ball-peen hammer because you disrespected them. You went out of pocket. Imagine somebody grabbing you by the hair of your head and pulling you out of that chair so hard it causes your scalp to separate from your skull. That is the type of injuries that these victims, juvenile and adults, have. What happens if the girls take money? If she takes money, she's stealing. First of all, she gets a beating. Then she gets the option of taking all her money she made that night and getting away from me. And then if she doesn't want to do that, now she has a charge on her. Now you have a $3,000 charge on you. you know, 
So now you don't know, you not only need to make your $500 every night, but you until you pay this $300, $3,000 charge, you don't get your nails done. You don't get no new outfits. You don't sleep in the hotel with the other girls. You know, you get, you get punished. And then if you don't want to endure the punishment, then you go choose another pimp or you go home, but you leave knowing that I don't play.